Hi! Welcome back to our Matilda reading. Today we are reading chapter six and it's called The Platinum Blonde Man. So this is our first picture here. Matilda and Mr. Wormwood. All right. So here we go. This is on page 50. Well, in my book. You might have it in my book, but that's okay. All right. The Platinum Blonde Man. There was no doubt in Matilda's mind that this latest display of foulness by her father deserved severe punishment. And as she sat eating her awful fried fish and fried chips and ignoring the television, her brain went on to work on various possibilities by the time she went up to her bed her mind was made up. The next morning, she got up early and went into the bathroom and locked the door. As we already know, Mrs. Wormwood's hair was dyed a brilliant platinum blonde. Very much the same glistening silvery color as a female tightrope walker's tights in a circus. The big dyeing job was done twice a year at the hairdresser's. But every month or so in between, Mrs. Wormwood used to freshen it up by giving it a rinse in the wash basin with something called platinum blonde hair dye extra strong was kept in the cupboard in the bathroom. Oh, sorry, I skipped a line. This also served to dye the nasty brown hairs that kept growing from the roots underneath. The bottle of platinum blonde hair dye extra strong was kept in the cupboard in the bathroom and underneath the title on the label were written the words caution. This is peroxide. Keep away from children. Matilda had read it many times with fascination. Matilda's father had a fine crop of black hair, which he parted in the middle, and of which he was exceedingly proud. Good strong hair, he was fond of saying, means there's a good strong brain underneath. Like Shakespeare, Matilda had once said to him, Like who? Shakespeare, Daddy. Was he brainy? Very, Daddy. He had masses of hair, did he? He was bold, Daddy. To which the father had snapped, If you can't talk sense, then shut up. There's Matilda and her father chatting. All right. Anyway, Mr. Wormwood kept his hair looking bright and strong, or so he thought, by rubbing into it every morning large quantities of a lotion called Oil of Violet's Hair Tonic. The bottle of this smelly purple mixture always stood on the shelf above the sink in the bathroom alongside all the toothbrushes, and a very vigorous scalp massage with oil of violets took place daily after shaving was completed. This hair and scalp massage was always accompanied by loud masculine grunts and heavy breathing and gasps of, Aw, oh, that's better. That's the stuff. Rub it right into the roots which could clearly be heard by Matilda in her bedroom across the corridor. There's Mr. Wormwood rubbing all his hair lotion in. Now in the early morning privacy of the bathroom, Matilda unscrewed the cap of her father's oil of violets and tipped three quarters of the contents down the drain. Then she filled the bottle up with her mother's platinum blonde hair dye extra strong. She carefully left enough of her father's original hair tonic in the bottle so that when she gave it a good shake, the whole thing still looked reasonably purple. She then replaced the bottle on the shelf above the sink, taking care to put her mother's bottle back in the cupboard. So far, so good. At breakfast time, Matilda sat quietly at the dining room table eating her cornflakes. Her, bro her brother sat opposite her, with his back to the door, devouring hunks of bread smothered with a mixture of peanut butter and strawberry jam. The mother was just out of sight around the corner in the kitchen, making Mr. Wormwood's breakfast, which always had to be two fried eggs on fried bread with three pork sausages and three strips of bacon on some fried tomatoes. At this point, Mr. Wood Wormwood came noisily into the room. He was incapable of entering any room quietly, especially at breakfast time. He always had to make his appearance felt immediately by creating a lot of noise and clatter. One could almost hear him saying, It's me, here I come, the great man himself, the master of the house, the wage earner, 
the one who makes it possible for all the rest of you to live so well. Notice me and pay your respects. On this occasion, he strode in and slapped his son on the back and sh shouted, Well, my boy, your father feels he's in for another great money-making day today at the garage. I've got a few little beauties I'm going to take to flog to the idiots this morning. Where's my breakfast? It's coming, treasure, Mrs. Wormwood called from the kitchen. Matilda kept her face bent low over her cornflakes. She didn't dare look up. In the first place, she wasn't at all sure that she was going what she was going to see. And secondly, if she did see what she thought she was going to see, she wouldn't trust herself to keep a straight face. The sun was looking directly ahead out of the window, stuffing himself with bread and peanut butter and strawberry jam. The father was just moving around to sit at the head of the table when the mother came sweeping out from the kitchen, carrying a huge plate piled high with eggs and sausages and bacon and tomatoes. She looked up. She caught sight of her husband. She stopped dead. Then she let out a scream that seemed to lift her right up into the air and she dropped the plate with a crash and a splash onto the floor. Everyone jumped, including Mr. Wormwood. There's Mrs. Wormwood, screaming and dropping all the food. What the heck's the matter with you, woman? He shouted. Look at the mess you've made on the carpet. Your hair, the mother was shrieking, pointing a quivering finger at her husband. Look at your hair. What have you done to your hair? What's wrong with my hair, for heaven's sake, he said. Oh my gosh, Dad, what have you done with your hair, he sh the son shouted. A splendid noisy scene was building up nicely in the breakfast room. Matilda said nothing. She simply sat there admiring the wonder wonderful effect on her own handiwork. Mr. Wormwood's fine crop of black hair was now a dirty silver, the color this time of a tightrope walker's tights that had not been washed for the entire circus season. You, you, you've dyed it, shrieked the mother. Why did you do it, you fool? It looks absolutely frightful. It looks horrendous. You look like a freak. What the blazes are you all talking about? The father yelled, putting both hands to his hair. I most certainly not have dyed it. What do you mean I've dyed it? What's happened to it? Or is it some sort of stupid joke? His face was turning pale green, the color of sour apples. You must have dyed it, Dad, the son said. It's the same color as Mum's, only much dirtier looking. Of course he's dyed it, the mother cried. You can't change color all by itself. What on earth were you trying to do? Make yourself look handsome or something? You look like someone's grandmother gone wrong. Get me a mirror, the father yelled. Don't just stand there shrieking at me. Get me a mirror. The mother's handbag lay in a chair at the other end of the table. She opened the bag and got out a powder compact that had a small round mirror on the inside of the lid. She opened the compact and handed it to her husband. He grabbed it and held it before his face, and in doing so spilled most of the powder all over the front of his fancy tweed jacket. There's Mr. Romwood taking a look at his hair for the first time. Be careful, shrieked the mother. Now look what you've done. That's my best Elizabeth Arden face powder. Oh my gosh, yelled the father, staring into the little mirror. What's happened to me? I look terrible. I look just like you gone wrong. I can't go down to the garage and sell cars like this. How did it happen? He stared around the room, first at the mother, then at the son, then at Matilda. How could it have happened? he yelled. I imagine, Daddy, Matilda said quietly, that you weren't looking very hard, and you simply took Mummy's bottle of hair stuff off the shelf instead of your own. Of course that's how it's happened, the mother cried. Well, really, Harry, how stupid can you get? Why didn't you read the label before you started splashing the stuff all over you? Mine's terribly strong. I'm only meant to use one t tablespoon of it in the whole basin of water. And you've gone and put it all over your head neat. It'll probably take all your hair off in the end. 
Is your scalp beginning to burn, dear? You mean I'm going to lose all my hair? The husband yelled. I think you will, the mother said. Peroxide is a very powerful chemical. That's why they put it down the lavatory to disinfect the pan. Only they give it another name. What are you saying? The husband cried. I'm not a lavatory pan. I don't want to be disinfected. Even diluted like I use it, the mother told them. It makes a good deal of my hair fall out. So goodness knows what's going to happen to you. I'm surprised it didn't take the whole top of your head off. What shall I do? Wailed the father. Tell me quick what to do before it starts falling out. Matilda said, I'd give it a good wash, Dad, if I were you, with soap and water. But you'll have to hurry. Will it change the colour back? The father asked anxiously. Of course it won't, you twit, the mother said. Then what do I do? I can't go around looking like this forever. You'll have to dye it black, the mother said. But first wash it out or there won't be anything there to dye. Right, the father shouted, springing into action. Get me an appointment with your hairdresser this instant for a hair dyeing job. Tell them it's an emergency. They've got to boot someone else off their list. I'm going upstairs to wash it now. With that, the man dashed out of the room and Mrs. Wormwood, sighing deeply, went to the telephone to call the beauty parlour. He does do some pretty silly things now and again, doesn't he, Mummy? Matilda said. The mother dialing the number on the phone said, I'm afraid men are not always quite as clever as they think they are. You will learn that when you get a bit older, my girl. And there's Matilda talking to her mom. All right, that's it for chapter six. Tomorrow we'll do number seven, which is called Miss Honey at three o'clock. So hope you enjoyed that chapter. And no activity tomorrow. There'll be one on Friday. All right, have a great day. See you tomorrow at three. Bye.